On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, Installing and Using Bibles in ProPresenter 5. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week we talk about using ProPresenter 5, primarily, but also other software in your local church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford, and I'm your host, and I'd love for you to ask your questions, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com contact, or just leave your question or comment below the video. Either way is perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable, and will get to me. So let's think about using Bibles by the default, ProPresenter, ProPresenter 5. 5. Did you know there's a built-in Bibles app Bibles, so that this is can how you pull up scripture pretty quickly? It. Well, first let's off, head on over and know is first install the modern translation and then take a look at its function. $15 each. And that's not because the Word of God itself is under copyright, but the translation of it is. And since the Apostle Paul said the worker is worth his wages, when he was quoting Jesus, who also said the worker is worth his wages, I think 15 bucks, small price to pay to make sure that there are people that study the original languages and can give us good translations. So you could go ahead and purchase these. But there are some other options for you down here. Public domain Bibles. So most of these Bibles were translated by people that are long dead. The King James Version, for example, 1611. You do the math, that's 400 years plus ago. So all those people have been dead and dead for a long time. So they no longer need to get paid for their efforts. And uh, even copyright doesn't last that long, even if their descendants want it to be. With that said, there are a couple of modern English versions here. There's the Bible in Basic English and the World English Bible. And let's say it's the World English Bible that you wanted. And basically you could uh, select that and... Since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to click this, and this is going to download the disk image file. So you'll see when I select that over here, bottom left, it actually said World English Bible DMG. So that's what's going to download. I've already downloaded that so that we don't have to wait for that to happen. And if I go ahead and head on over to Finder here, you'll see that I have the World English Bible. Now, that needs to be mounted on the system because basically in OS X it thinks that this is a disk. So we need to have that show up. Double click on it and you'll see it show up over here in Devices. If you have the settings correct, it'll also show up on your desktop. and it should, by default, open up a window that looks like the way that I'm going to show. If not, just click on that, and it'll show you the same thing. So, go over here. <clears throat> this is a PKG file. Basically, that means that there's an installer that will be installing this. So, I'm going to double-click on that. And I expect that what's going to happen is it's going to say, no, sorry, we can't install that. So let's see if that's exactly what we get. Now, in this case, it didn't pop up this dialog, and that's probably because 
I've already installed this software. So let me show you if it did pop up a dialog that said, no, sorry, you can't install this. This is the step that you would go to. You would go up here to the Apple menu and choose System Preferences or I keep mine in the dock. Either way, the result's the same. And then you need to go to Security and Privacy. And once this loads, I'll show you where to click. Okay, once this loads, there's a button you saw that just popped away, said Open Anyway. You'll just need to click that. If you want to make sure that that never happens again, you can click this lock down here. It'll ask you for an administrator login and password. You put that in, and then you can change it to anywhere. So there are three settings. Just the Mac App Store. Well, we got this off the website, so that won't work. Just the Mac App Store and identified developers. I'm surprised Renewed Vision isn't, but maybe this is before the, they started doing that and anywhere. So you can change it to anywhere, but keep in mind that anywhere is the least secure of these options. So if you know what you're doing, that's one thing. If you're not sure which you should choose, I would steer clear of that and stick with just Mac App Store or Mac App Store and identified developers, knowing that you can always click the button that would have shown up down here which says install anyway, okay? So that's that, and I can either close this or I can go to System Preferences, Quit System Preferences, or Hold Down Command and Tap Q. Any of those is the preferred solution for this. Now, I'll need to restart ProPresenter 5 to get it to look for the Bible that I just installed, because it only looks for Bibles when it boots up. So, I have already installed this Bible, and I have already restarted ProPresenter 5 to save us some time. So here we are in this. Now let's go to Bibles. If you have a Bibles icon right here, just click on that, that'll do it. You can add that if you don't have it already, and I've got another screencast that shows you how to do that. So I'm not going to go through that right now. Or you can go to View Bibles. Now you'll notice this little rooftop looking icon. That means Control. So Control B. So that's actually what I'm going to do is Control B. And this is going to pop me over into Bibles. Now let me show you a few things about this. We have our translations that I've installed. I can choose the book, or I can just go right ahead and type this in, which is what I did. Now I can have verse numbers or not verse numbers, break on the verse or not break on the verse, and then have the references show up with each verse, with each passage, with the last passage, or no reference. And as long as I've chosen one of these other than no reference, I can either choose to show the translation or not show the translation. That's up to me. I can also tweak the template right here and if I had more than one verse that I was showing I can change the transition. So those are all perfectly good things to do here. I can add another verse if the pastor says, you know I'm gonna go ahead and read that next verse. I can do that that's not a big deal just by clicking here. There we go. So I click twice so I got two new verses. Clicking again should give me a, another new verse. Okay, so that's a good way to do that. Here's the problem though. You'll notice that I've got one scripture passage here. I don't know about you, but my pastor 
does a bunch of scripture passages. Old Testament, New Testament, hops around, does that kind of thing. Maybe one long passage, but then other verses that highlight that passage. So this wouldn't necessarily work in that circumstance, especially if I've got more than one service where I would be doing the same thing over and over again. Also, it could be that I want to tweak the formatting of this a little bit, you know, bold something, highlight it with uh, italics, underline something like that. Not really something that you can do here. So this is great for the worship leader says, hey, I'm going to read John 3.16 through 19 during worship. Great for that. Message notes, less great. So the a great way to get past that is, first we're going to close this. I'm going to go into my message notes section here. And what I would do is I would add it individually. Now where am I going to get that from? Well, let's switch back over to Chrome here and I can search over on BibleGateway.com for what I need. Here I'm in the New International Version. Let's say I really wanted the New Living Translation. I can do that. Click search and it will update. And then I can drag over this, hold down command, hit C for copy, or go to edit, copy, either way. And once I get those, I can command tab back over to ProPresenter 5, right click, I can do a quick edit and just paste that in or edit slide, which is what I'm going to do. Then I double click to edit this. I paste that in. The formatting is not going to be right, but that's okay because I can always apply a template later. Or, you know, this was 48. I can al always do that. And then add bold. And, you know, basically I can tweak that. I don't know why that's not updating here. Um, oh, because it wasn't highlighted. So I'm just going to. There we go. So I can do that. Now let's say I wanted to highlight sun here. I can do that, make it italicized, maybe make it underlined. Basically anything that I want to do here, um, change the color of the text. I have a lot more control doing it this way. And once I've added it once, I don't have to go back unless the pastor was just doing one passage and not referencing anything else this is actually a little bit better way to do this i still think it's worth paying for the the translations that you use in your particular church because you never know when someone comes in last minute and they they need different uh they need a big passage and you can just add it quickly and easily kind of circumventing the trouble of going to something else. And I like to think, hey, how much would I pay to save myself some work? Would I pay $15? Yes, I think I would in this case. So that should help you out using Bibles in ProPresenter 5. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that made it easy for using Bibles in ProPresenter 5 and when it may not necessarily be the right time to. If you enjoy this content, don't hesitate to sign up to my email newsletter. You can do that by heading over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S. And there you can download my five favorite ProPresenter 5 tricks and a little PDF I've put together of how I went through 
and did this so you don't have to watch the video again if you just want a quick reference guide. So head on over there and check that out. Till next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity.